You are loved with an everlasting love. That's what the Bible says. And underneath are the everlasting arms. This is your friend Elizabeth Elliot. Delighted today to talk with Shirley Dobson. I'm in her studio, and we're going to be talking about several things, primarily prayer. Welcome, Shirley, and thank you so much for giving me this privilege. Elizabeth, it is my honor to be on your broadcast today. I've been a great admirer of you for years and uh, enjoyed your books and your radio broadcast, and uh, my, what a ministry you've had. Well, to God be the glory. And since we're talking about family prayer, and you come from a family and have a family, and so do I, there's lots to say. Tell me about the importance of family prayer. Probably the training that children um, get at home is probably the most important that they will ever receive. It carries them through life. And prayer is, an, I feel, is an anchor to the family. I know when I was growing up, uh, when I was scared or worried or anxious or just had any little bobble in my life, I'd go to my knees in prayer. So I think prayer is very important to a family. I come from a family who every single morning after breakfast, we were all herded into the living room, and either my father or my mother would sit down at the piano and play a hymn, and we would sing one hymn, all the stanzas, and they were not praise songs in those days, they were the great hymns of the faith, and then my father would read the Bible, and then we all got down on our knees, and he prayed for us, with us, and then we concluded with the Lord's Prayer. And of course, I would be able to say uh, that as a kid, it wasn't as though we were eager to hear that, but it was a routine, and there was never any deviation. Yeah, Elizabeth, I remember a similar situation when I was in college. I was invited over to a friend's home, and um, my I did not come from a Christian home. My mother had a deep faith in God, but I have to say, when I was a small child, she isn't what we would call today a born-again Christian. But uh, she did have a deep faith in the Lord. But I remember going to this home where they were Christians, and um, it was a Friday night, and the, the next morning we gathered at breakfast, and I'll never forget that after breakfast, the Father asked all of us to kneel by our chairs, and He prayed for each one of us by name. And not coming from a Christian home, that made such an impression on me. Uh, I never forgot that, and we tried to uh, model that in our home on Saturdays. We'd, we'd kneel by our chairs after breakfast, and Jim would pray for each one of us by name. So that was very powerful in my life. Well, that's wonderful. Family prayer, so important, isn't it? And it does give children a firm foundation. I think of how when five out of the six of us became missionaries, our parents continued to follow us with their prayers. And I'm so very grateful for that. Would you be able to tell us what you think prayer is, Shirley? Oh, boy, that's a tough one, Elizabeth. <laughs> you know, um, theologians have written volumes on prayer, and um, so I don't think I'm going to be able to tie a ribbon around it this morning. But you know what I was thinking the other day? I was wondering, if God knows every thought, and He's known every thought, according to the Bible, since the foundation of the world, then why doesn't He just know our thoughts, and why do we have to pray? And I was talking to Jim about this, my husband, and I said, uh, isn't it interesting that he knows our thoughts and yet he wants us to pray? And Jim said, well, he said, there's no relationship in eavesdropping. God wants a relationship with us. You can't have a relationship with someone if you don't talk to them. You couldn't have a relationship with Lars if you didn't have a conversation now and then. And, uh, and, and it just boggles my mind that the Lord wants us to have a heart-to-heart, spirit-to-spirit relationship with Him and express that in talking to Him in prayer. And it's just a conversation. I don't think we need to get all bogged down and um, make too big of a deal out of it. It's just mm -hmm. talking to the Lord and expressing our heart. When the Lord Jesus talked to His disciples, and He said, When you pray, say. And He told us what to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our Father who art in heaven. And I assume that many of our listeners are very familiar with that. And perhaps that, that may be for some the only thing, the only prayer that they know. 
Prayer isn't so much of what God can do for us, but it changes us when we pray. Someone said, when we don't pray, we're depending upon ourselves. And when we do pray, we're depending upon God. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, I think that says a lot in a nutshell. Prayer has been very important to me all of my life. Growing up as a small child, um, that's really where I started a prayer life, was kneeling by my tiny bed in my bedroom and calling upon the Lord uh, uh, daily and uh, have continued that tradition uh, through my growing up years. And even now, I set aside one day a week for prayer and fasting, that the Lord would just um, cover my family, cover this ministry, cover uh, other ministries, and he has been so faithful. Are there ever times, Shirley, when you just really don't feel as though you're getting through to God? Yes. Sometimes I feel like my prayers are hitting the ceiling. But, you know, the Bible doesn't tell us to pray when we feel like it. Prayer is a, a discipline. It's, it's a commitment in your life. And uh, so you never know, though, when the Lord is going to break in in your prayer closet. And when he does, oh, isn't it worth it? <laughs> Have you had times, Elizabeth, when you've been praying that, that the sweetness of the Spirit has just come in and you've just broken into tears? I mean, you feel his presence so strongly. Yes, I think I can honestly say I have had some occasions like that, but not many. I'm a worry wart, and it's something that one is required to get over. You know, the Bible says don't worry about anything, whatever. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, make your requests known to God. I think God just wants to hear our words. I think there, you know, I was reading in Revelation where prayer, when when we pray, those prayers are put in a golden bowl in heaven, and and it's a sweet smelling fragrance that comes up before the throne of God. And I think that's a beautiful word picture of our prayers. And um, and my heart is that uh, my prayers will be. Uh, a sweet fragrance to the Lord and, and a continuing fragrance to Him, not just a once in a while. Uh, one night, I I want to just share this with our listeners, but one night about 11 o'clock at night, Jim and I were burdened to pray for our daughter. She was out with a friend and they were having a good time somewhere, but we, we just were impressed to pray for her. And about midnight, she came home and she said, Dad and Mom, oh, she said, I had the most scary night. She said, let me tell you what happened. She said, my friend and I went to a hamburger place and we bought some hamburgers and we pulled around the corner and we parked and we were just enjoying our hamburgers and our Cokes. And all of a sudden, we heard this clunk underneath the car. And she said, this man crawled out from under my car, had little linen-type glasses, and was looking in the window. And she said, I I quickly locked the door and started up the car and left. And uh, she found out later from some of her other friends that uh, some policemen had been looking for this man, and he'd been hiding under their car. And that was at the precise time that Jim and I were burdened to pray for Danae, and we're on our knees praying for her. So I think the Spirit draws us into prayer many times um, when there is a, a need. Well, that is amazing. That's remarkable. Now, are there different types of prayer, Shirley? I really like the ACTS principle, A-C-T-S, where you take A, and that represents adoration, C, confession, T, thanksgiving, and S, supplication. I really like to follow that principle. I think we get bogged down on number four, though, the S, with a supplication and requests. Would you do the four of them again? Just repeat those. The Acts principle, A for adoration, where we praise and worship and uh, just enjoy the Lord, thank Him for who He is and and for His gifts to us. And then uh, the C is confession. You know, the Lord says uh, in His Word that He doesn't hear our prayers if we have sin in our life, known sin that's blocking our relationship with Him. So if there's any known sin, we're to put our finger on it and confess it. T, which is thanksgiving, to thank Him for all His gifts, to thank Him for His daily provisions and His protection in our life. And then S would be supplications and requests should be last. But many times, don't you think we go to four first? 
the supplication and the request. We have our wish list, and Lord, would you take care of this today, and would you bless me in this effort today? And we really forget to come before him in adoration and praise and worship, which is the very first part of Acts, the adoration. And what a privilege, you know, I think of the old hymn, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry what? Everything, Everything to God, to God, in, God prayer. in prayer. Right. We don't have to go through his secretary. We don't have to get on his schedule. I mean, prayer is always available, and he's always ha- always has a listening ear. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Mm-hmm. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. It's a liberating thing to realize that here we are, down in the dumps sometimes and feeling very unspiritual what do you do then well if i waited until i felt like praying i probably wouldn't pray very often again prayer is a discipline and um and the bible says that no one comes to the father unless he's drawn by the holy spirit and many times i feel drawn into prayer but many times i don't feel anything but i just I just pray in any way. And as I said, I never know when God's going to break in, when I take the time. And it may only be five minutes. I think there's times when I pray in my car and I'm rushing somewhere and I'm in prayer in my car. There's times when I send up little arrow prayers before maybe I'm speaking or have an appointment. But Elizabeth, I also think there's time for the kind of prayers that take place in a prayer closet where you're really doing business with the Lord and you're really spending time at his feet. I think that's that's a very important part of a, of a Christian's prayer life. Well, I couldn't agree more. I, I like to pray while I'm walking sometimes. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are different times of the day when I like to pray. Usually it's early in the morning. That's definitely one thing that I don't ever want to omit. I used to uh, take a walk in the morning also. My husband's kind of on my case because I'm not exercising enough now, but I have a neighbor, she calls it her prayer walk, and so she does, like you, take a walk and pray. But, uh, you know, however we want to do it, uh, our pastor's wife, I remember, said one time, somebody asked her, "When, when does she pray? And she said, well, the first time I can choose in my day, when I have a choice, where I could sit down with a cup of coffee and a magazine or a newspaper, that is a choice. The first time I have a choice, I spend that time in prayer. And she used to tape pictures on her chair that uh, would help her come into the presence of the Lord. Maybe it would be um, a scene in the mountains or a lake or, or just some, something that would draw her into prayer. And I thought that was a very creative idea.